uh, this is an introduction to Alexio. It's in fact like a very gentle introduction, like a very high level on what Alexio is and uh, what it can do for you. Uh, so first of all, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. Uh, and also thank you very much Om Omid for arranging this. And many thanks to you all for the patience and time to attend this presentation, of course. Little about me, <coughs> my name is Vasishta Polali. I am founder of Boolean UG, a startup based in Berlin, Germany. So what we do is we specialize in building customized software solutions for our clients in uh, data engineering and uh, data science domain. Uh, no, no. Uh, are based on distributed computing. No, no, no. uh, can you please mute? hearing some background noise thank you so yeah i was saying like we specialize in building customized solutions in the data engineering and data science domain based on distributed computing cloud computing and uh, devops paradigms uh, about myself i've been a software engineer for quite a long time now and have experience working in india usa and europe uh, i worked in organizations like nike warner brothers uh, in the us takeaway dot com and asml for example in the europe uh, these are like to name a few so before we dive more into what is alexio and what it can accomplish let's quickly look at some common challenges uh, that organization uh, organizations currently face in maintaining their data uh, data ecosystem so the data ecosystem nowadays is a combination of many compute frameworks like storage systems and also storage systems that are very distributed uh, with many of them not co-located. So the storage system and compute systems are not usually co-located. And particularly if the integration is heavy, it creates like a really painful organizational drag. Broadly, there can be four categories of issues affecting each organization, in parts or whole. So the number one would be speed and complexity, like integration and interop operability issues between on-prem cloud and hybrid infrastructures. Um, there are a lot of architectures across the organization running applications that are distributed across multiple platforms, especially when there are stakeholders from many departments and groups involved. There might be a dependency on legacy systems or the application are in state of migration uh, to the next gen software stack. And then Next comes data availability in terms of uh, degree of its usefulness in reference to its age. Uh, that means how fresh is the data when it is being applied on a particular use case. When processing systems are say distributed across different data centers or platforms, it causes a lot of data movement across the network. Uh, it slows down the availability and sometimes causes data loss and uh, data duplication all the time as well. There is also a need for a lot of synchronization between different systems involving data exchange. Uh, yes. Cost-wise also maintaining such architectures is also very expensive. And finally, data governance and data security also gets more complex in these situations. That is, as there is a need for more data anonymization, defining and mating, maintaining more complex processes across data storage, ownership, and access uh, across different systems. It causes extra overhead on time, money, and resources, um, project management-wise. And it also broadens the vector of exposure of the data for malicious attacks. So more the copies, more distributed, and more the systems you have, it, the vector also increases. So now let's look at how Alexio can help us in these situations. First of all, what is Alexio? In short, uh, it is a platform for achieving data orchestration for analytics and AI, primarily on cloud. It bridges a gap between the applications and storage systems, bringing data from storage layer closer to the compute layer. It is primarily a distributed in-memory block storage file system uh, with a memory first tiered architecture. It particularly shines when used for big data and machine learning workloads. It also provides a data sharing capability uh, with data, origin data originating from disparate sources, but access from a unified space as if it's being re read or written to a, a, uh, to a single location. For example, say an analytics team 
needs data from different sources, uh, say for reporting or exploratory analysis or a team of data scientists is doing, I want to train <clears throat> models to do some predictive modeling. The typical process is for a big data engineering team, it identifies the sources, builds and deploys the ETL pipelines. It cleanses, normalizes the data, moves and stores the data around uh, various staging areas, of course. And then it performs use case specific analytical processing on it and putting it into the respective service layers, depending on the uh, application. So if different applications are say using different combinations of these sources, then some of the data has to be processed multiple times, uh, stored multiple times, causing data redundancy and above all increasing processing times and maintenance costs. But with Alexio, we can cut down on this overhead with remote data sharing in a unified namespace. Data from multiple systems <coughs> sorry, and object stores like say S3, HDFS, and other cl cloud providers, uh, cloud services, storage services, or on-prem uh, NFS can be mounted onto Alexio, appearing and accessed as if they were part of a single system. With Alexio, data categorized as hot, warm, and cold can considerably speed up access to frequently accessed data. Like in machine learning algorithms, particularly when the data is trained typically in iterations or epochs, you reuse the data, right? In those scenarios. And any temporary data generated as part of the processing like metadata operations or sharing of objects between applications can be stored in Alexio and safely discarded after its usage. It doesn't have to be persisted. Same goes for exchange of any time sensitive data between applications in say many to many relationship fashion. And it can be shared different between different applications from the same location, uh, avoiding IO, disk IO overhead. Like you can, don't have to make copies uh, of the data to share it with multiple applications. It's just in one location in Alexio and all you have to do is connect to that uh, uh, single source to access the data from various applications. Since Alexio has read and write support, it can also be used as a data source and also a data sync at the same time. Unified and uh, UFS namespace. So as discussed in the previous slides, one of the key benefits that Alexio provides is a unified namespace to the applications. This is an abstraction that allows applications to access uh, multiple independent storage systems through same namespace and interface. Rather than communicating with each individual storage systems, application can delegate this responsibility. The same thing that we discussed, it can just, the applications can delegate the uh, reading and the unification of data to Alexio. And then all they have to do is connect to the Alexio, which will handle the different underlying storage system. Transparent naming maintains an identity between the Alexio namespace and the underlying storage system namespace. Say, for example, when an object is created uh, in Alexio, then user can choose whether these objects should be persisted in the underlying storage system or not. For objects that are pers persisted, Alexio preserves the object's path uh, relative to the underlying storage system directory. For instance, if a user creates a top level directory users, its subdirectories, Alice and Bob. The directory structure and naming is preserved in the underlying storage system as well. Similarly, when a user renames or deletes a persistent object in the Alexio namespace, it is rename, uh, in turn renamed or deleted in the underlying storage system. Alexio also transparently discovers content present in the underlying storage system, uh, which was not created through it. Alexio loads metadata from the UFS as needed. For example, uh, the files in the under, under uh, uh, storage system will be discovered when the user lists the file in Alexio namespace. Even if data is not currently within the Alexio storage, files within a connected UFS are still visible to the Alexio clients. This is, the data is copied to the Alexio storage only when a client attempts to read the file. Until then only the metadata is stored in the Alexio. The UFS metadata syncing can be enabled to periodically sync the metadata between the underlying uh, file system and Alexio. This can be done for the entire directory structure in the root mount point uh, or a specific file. You can like mount the under, uh, under file system as the root point 
in Elixir or just the, you can just uh, <clears throat> mount them into individual directory paths. Server side API transmission. So what this does is like say, Alexa supports a lot of storage integrations like HDFS, NFS, CephFS, MiniIO, all the storage services from all major cloud providers. Uh, it also provides some popular compute level integrations. Uh, you can access Alexio with the Apache Spark, Flink, Presto, TensorFlow, and of course, good old Hadoop MapReduce. These integrations enable Alexio to also double up as a middleware layer, providing API translations between dif these different interfaces. Like you can use the same application to read and write to different and storage systems and at the same time you can share data between uh, different compute frameworks with a single connector all you have to do is connect to alexio it doesn't matter which uh, framework you are using so here is an example on how we can provide a catalog of available data sources for data scientists from various sources on in uh, through alexio they can now choose like which source they want for their analysis. Actually, the names of the directories uh, do not have to do not have to uh, denote the source type or the mount type. I do this. What is the only gas industry doing? What is their political question? Sorry, hello. Is there question? I just this uh, just can you guys please mute? Well, there's a lot of background noise. I just did this for what clarity on how you can mount uh, various sources. Intelligent cache is an is another uh, feature of Alexio. Uh, Alexio storage is mainly aimed at storing hot uh, transient data is not uh, focused on long-term persistence. So the long-term persistence is always the job of UFS typically. And Alexio manages a local storage, including memory of Alexio workers uh, to act as a distributed buffer cache. Data in Alexio can be replicated to make hot data more readily available for IO operations. Uh, this is particularly helpful when the computing engine uh, running the application is co-located with the worker node, thereby decreasing uh, latencies. Like for example, if you have a, a Spark uh, nodes or Spark workers and Alexio workers co-located, then that would be like the compute and storage integration. Um, and with the hard data, the IO operations are considerably reduced and it's like very fast. Alexio does like the same goes with Presto and other distributed architectures. Also. Alexio does not need to keep copies of data that are not being used to. It doesn't keep copies. Uh, replicas of uh, unnecessarily. Any. Replicas of data within Alexio are also independent of the replicas that may exist within the under file system. The number of replicas within Alexio is determined dynamically by cluster activity, thereby uh, saving storage space. So the frequently used data uh, is given more priority uh, to save in Alexio. Alexio also supports tiered storage configuration such as memory, uh, SSD and HDD tiers, uh, which make the storage system media aware. This enables decreased fetching latencies similar to how L1 L2 CPU caches operate. The amount and type of storage we, for each Alexio worker node to manage uh, is determined by user-provided configuration on installation and ongoing management. So from the client perspective for uh, data reads, the first preference is always local cache hit. The client perspective is the application that's uh, using Alexio client to actually access the data in Alexio. So it's like the first uh, preference is always local cache hit. In cases where they say application is running on the same node as the worker and the data is available locally, then the client uses a short circuit policy to bypass Alexio worker and read the file directly via the, uh, via the local file system. And then next best is the remote cache hit in cases where the requested data is stored in Alexio, but not on client's local worker, 
but on a different worker. <clears throat> also, there is a cache miss where the data is not available within the Alexio space and the worker will have to read the data from the under storage. Obviously, this causes the maximum data cache miss. For write, the options are must cache where the data is only written to Alexio worker. Cache through is where the data is written synchronously to an Alexio worker and the under uh, storage file system. Async through is the option where data is written synchronously to an Alexio worker first and then persisted to the under storage in the background. And through is, with, uh, is when uh, the data is written to under storage synchronously without being cached to Alexio workers is directly written to the under storage. Now let's quickly look at the Alexio architecture. So Alexio can be divided into three components, masters, uh, workers, and clients. <clears throat> so it's like a master slave architecture similar to Hadoop. A typical cluster consists of a single leading master and standby masters, a job master, standby job masters, workers, and job workers. These are different uh, services in the Alexio cluster. Standby masters are la launched on different servers to provide fault tolerance uh, when running Alexio in HA mode. Standby masters uh, read journals written by the leading master and keep their own copies of the master uh, state up to date and also write journal checkpoints for faster recovery on failure uh, themselves. Uh, they also write uh, journal checkpoints. After leading master failover, the standby masters, we will re-elect a new leading master. The maintenance of a shared file system state across service restarts uh, and maintaining consensus among masters can be handled using either uh, Zookeeper or Raft protocol. Uh, Raft protocol, in fact, requires no dependency on external services like Zookeeper does. It, it needs a separate cluster, but Raft does it. Only one master process uh, at a given time can be the leading master in an Alexio cluster. Rest of them are all uh, standby masters. The leading master is responsible for managing the global metadata of the system. The leading master records all file system transactions to a distributed persistent storage to allow for recovery of the master state information. This is set of record. This set of records is called actually as a journal. Alexio job masters and job workers can be separated into a separate function, which, in, which is termed as a, as a job service. Typically, they handle the interfacing with UFS and application uh, control, the job service. Job master, job worker. This function is designed in such a way that all jobs are of the Alexio cluster. However, it recommended at least for the job workers and the Alexio worker to be co-located as it provides low latency for RPCs and data transfer. Now the Alexio client provides users a gateway to interact with the Alexio servers. Uh, Alexio client initiates the communication with the leading master to carry out uh, metadata operations and with workers to read and write data. Alexio also supports a native file system API in Java. Apart from this, it also has bindings in Go and Python and also has a REST interface as well. However, these are still experimental. Uh, so these are like primarily for development and testing, you must say correctly. There is also a Fuse-based POSIX API, which is a feature that allows mounting of Alexio file system as a standard file system on most flavors of Linux. By using this feature, standard tools like LS, CAT, or say MKDIR will have basic, uh, basic access to Alexio namespace. More importantly, with POSIX API, it opens up more uh, opportunities for the applications to interact with Alexio worker, particularly when, say, there is no custom library integration in, say, any pro in some programming language that you are using. Uh, it doesn't need now the Alexio library. It can directly access the, uh, the, access the data to the POSIX API. But one word of caution is there is always a trade-off between performance and the computing model being used and needs to be carefully tested and benchmarked case by case. Uh, that's uh, individual systems. Now, where best to use Alexio? 
Typically, you would want to use LXO when we want to unify namespaces on your cloud deployments or cloud, across cloud provider deployments. Um, also, when we are facing high IO or uh, network latencies in uh, processing or accessing the data. And there is need for sharing of data between different applications or, in fact, different data centers as well. There is a lot of uh, data movement happening, sharing and movement. One other feature Alexio shines at it is uh, creating hive external tables on the data in Alexio namespace and accessing it through compute engines like Presto and Spark, for example. This would give performance boost, uh, particularly with analytic queries on big data sets and for reporting dashboards because of the memory first architecture of Alexio. If you can manage the data for these analytic queries to be hot on Alexio, it comes directly most probably from the uh, memory and also if it's cache hit then it's like uh, you get tremendous benefits um, in performance query performance so some of the use cases this is an effort to quickly say list out common use cases based on the information we have seen on alexio thus far the first use case we would discuss is speed up analytics and ai for on-premises object stores Though cloud object stores are often, <coughs> sorry, though cloud object stores are more of, often more cost effective, uh, easier to use and easier to scale, performance is variable and consistent SLAs are hard. Metadata operations are expensive and slow down workloads as well. There may be also a lack of enough native support for uh, popular frameworks. But Alexio addresses these challenges by providing intelligent multi-tiered caching and metadata management, which will let you achieve consistent performance on analytic, uh, for analytical engines. It will reduce AI training time and cost. It will eliminate repeated storage access costs. Like for example, API or operations on S3 to get and put data. It will reduce the number of calls to S3. There is support for multiple APIs with no changes to the end user experience. It doesn't matter where the data is coming from or which application is processing and who, which application or which uh, framework is writing data. The user uh, experience doesn't change. You can just interchange fully use the application. You can achieve off cluster caching for ephemeral workloads. It can also be used to help reduce the overall storage costs. Say most, if there is some temporary data generated as part of the application processing or the ETL pipeline, or there is time sensitive data that loses value after a certain time, you can just keep it in Alexio and then just discard it. It will save you costs and also increase your access costs. The second one would be zero copy hybrid cloud bursting. So in view of GDPR and ever increasing focus on data privacy, this use case is particularly valid for organizations uh, which have an hybrid approach of using compute resources in cloud while retrieving data from on-premises uh, data sources. The typical problems they are, uh, they face. Uh, firstly, data access across the network is slow and inconsistent. Uh, then copying data to cloud storage is time consuming, error prone and complex. And also compliance and data sovereignty requirements may prohibit copying data into the cloud. That is actually persisting data in the cloud in some use cases. So for this Alexio provides zero copy uh, cloud bursting, which enables compute engines in the cloud to access data on premise without the need of a persistent copy of data. It only needs to be periodically synchronized to the original data on premise via metadata operation. It provides performance as if data is on the cloud compute cluster close to the compute nodes. No changes to user end user experience and security model are needed as well. It creates a common data layer with policy driven data access and of course saves cloud computing cost too. The third one we would like to discuss is enabling cross, uh, cross and data center access. Many organizations maintain satellite compute clusters that are independent of their main data cluster for the purpose of performance, security, or resource isolation. These satellite clusters need to access data remotely uh, from the main cluster, which is challenging because 
cross data center copies are manual and time consuming unnecessary network traffic for a replication uh, it's expensive replication jobs on an overloaded storage cluster uh, dramatically impact the performance of existing workloads lxo to solve this lxo can be deployed on the compute nodes in the satellite cluster and configured to connect to the main data cluster service as serving as one logical copy of the data this provides the elimination of redundant data copies across data centers and complex synchronization and it definitely improves performance compared to remote region data access self service data infrastructure across business units is another benefit especially when aligned with the enterprise wide processes and policies governing data access and movement while this presentation is about alexio in general uh, but for actually installing and using it uh, alexio has two distributions open uh, open source under the apache foundation license and the license enterprise edition this table shows the major difference between the open source and the license version uh, we don't have to go through all of them but the major difference or lack thereof in open source is around security compliance and user management while the license version provides kerberos authentication for alexio users and transport security between masters and workers and devops capabilities also come out of the box in enterprise edition these are missing from the open source project nonetheless these can be achieved by developing services in house as most of the core apis are available in the open source version for example for one of our clients uh, we built a solution to deploy scale and secure alexio on kubernetes with terraform and git actions and there is also alexio proxy service and postix api as we discussed earlier that can be used to make it more enterprise ready the open source version too some info on metrics uh, you can actually actually visit alexio the blog page in alexio it has like tons of uh, information about uh, real time use cases on alexio these are a couple of links to real time use cases where alexio helped organizations speed up their machine learning training and also radically improve the analytical query performance with hive and spark sql for example please do take time to visit the alexio blog page uh, to know more about such use cases and performance uh, performance metrics of alexio in uh, real time they have a lot of benchmarks uh recorded there too so that would be really helpful so we at bullion ug uh, how can we help you leverage open source uh, alexio so in you want to try out open source alexio in your organization uh, you need some help in getting started then please shoot me an email or message uh, me on linkedin uh, details are in the about me slide or you can just message me in this meetup group as well so we can help you develop scalable solutions for your uh, data processing use cases using open source alexio and we can also help you scale it and harden it and so that it can be eventually integrated it into enterprise your enterprise system landscape finally thank you for the opportunity and patiently listening to me so this is just a high level introduction on the architecture use cases and benefits of alexio primarily for the uninitiated uh, i must say maybe in the future we can plan another session to better understand the internals of alexio we can dive deeper technically into the various features of alexio and the configurations of op options available uh, for performance tuning uh, maybe like have some live uh, demo sessions and such that would be nice uh, vasista uh, just uh, questions from the audience if you could uh, read them and uh, 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 okay comment the questions are in the chat right yes would you like me to read it to you that's fine i'll just open it yes so the yes. question is does the enterprise edition use a mutual TLS to authenticate the nodes. Uh, I'm not mutual. What? Sorry, mutual TLS. Yeah, it's SSS. Okay. The second question: SSL, Is there sorry. any other alternative than HashiCorp Vault to supply key material for the encryption at rest? Is there any other alternatives? 
then hashicorp wall to supply key material for encryption of trust uh so i i would suggest uh, so you can visit the alexio community i'm not sure about like how enterprise edition works i primarily work more on uh, open source uh so i can forward this request uh, to the alexio team and then i think we can i can uh, also do that uh, i'm also yeah. in touch with the alexio team you can send yeah. me the request i will happily pass yeah. it along yeah you know bin fan right uh, yes bin fan so, yeah, yeah, was a uh, guest in this uh, yeah. community in the past yes uh so the same uh, licensing model and cost uh, i think omid uh, or me yeah, I, can, I would be happy to assist you yeah patch you through uh, to bin yeah. i will leave my personal my work email yes send uh, daniel send me an email Yes. And I will be happy to forward all your question uh, to yes. Bin Fan, which is the founder of Aloxi. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'll leave mine too. Uh, so you sure, can. Sure, sure, sure. Any yes. other question, uh, guys, before we finish? Okay. So, Vasista, I would like to thank you very much for your time and effort. Please send me the slides via email so I will be able to share this with the community and hopefully open, uh, upload it to our website, okay? Sure, we'll do it, yeah. Thank you very much. Unless there's other questions in the audience before we wrap up. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everybody.